tonight, exclusively on NBN. LPD has not responded to any welfare checks for Anthony McRae. There was a welfare check at the address on Howell Street on February 5th, but was not related to the accused. New questions in the Michigan State shooting rampage. What did the Lansing police know about the gunman, and when did they know it? And... I'm going to tell what I think he cupping up. Former chief, other people, told me he stayed with the woman who sued the city, lived with her, repeated 911 calls possibly, and people intervened. That's T. Green, the one standing up here hollered at me when I asked him about some city business and talking foolishness. Sex, lies, and we've got the videotape. Flint police embroiled in a sex and abuse scandal. A secret settlement. City Councilman Eric Mays promises to expose the power brokers and their pillow talk. He joins us. Finally, Cracker Jack or Crack Pot? It's the reason I did not concede after the 2022 election. Why would I concede to a fraudulent process? Conceding to a fraudulent process is an agreement with the fraud, which I will not do. She lost the Secretary of State race in a landslide, but Christina Caramo still refuses to concede. Not even Trump wants her, but she's now been voted chairman of the Michigan Republican Party. Does the GOP have a future? Former Executive Director Jason Rowe is here. And now... Live from downtown Detroit, it's no BS News Hour with my main man, Stoney! Na 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 no bullshit! <laughs> Just a breaking news. Double or bullshit. Double or bullshit. All right, bro. Big show. Lots of news tonight. Lots of exclusive news. But we want to remind everybody to please patronize. <laughs> yes. Is that correct? Yes. Patronize our underwriters, uh, Hall Financial. Over 40% of Americans don't have 500 bucks in their emergency fund. Can that be true? I'm. Yeah, that's awful. A lot of people might not realize they can use the equity in their home to put themselves in a better financial situation. A cash out refinance from Hall Financial can help relieve financial stress and... Keep you and your family prepared for the future. And what are the rates going at now? 20%? Oh, God. Yeah, don't pay 20%. What's a refi? Uh, a refi is going to be a lot lower, right? Six, five, five six. yeah. But I mean, the hello, only, ding. Uh, the only way to find out is by calling Hall. And there you go. Whether you're looking to purchase a new home or refinance your current home, you need to call Hall Financial first at 866-CALL-HALL or get started by going to callhallfirst.com. Uh, Legacy Partners Insurance. Here, I'm going to give the number, 586-209-4106, Legacy Partner Insurance, 586-209-4106. Mark, you went to them two years ago? I did, yeah, two years ago. Saved me a ton of money. I think I've, ta I've talked about that before, about $2,500. $2,500, like, that's for like the, the, the Mark Empire. Yes. Right? The home. Very tiny the empire. The cars. Yeah. 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 But so that's 2500 It's a lot, right? Exactly. It's, I'm going to grow my empire. And then what happened last so, week? Well, it actually started last month. I got a call from Alex who's like, hey, I've been looking over, over at your Legacy. Policy. Yeah, over at Legacy. I've been looking at your policy. I think I can save you $600 and sent me the longest email. And he kept calling me until I responded. I just kept saying, I'm going to get you. I'm going to get you. Well, I finally talked to him this morning. It took me 25 minutes, went over everything. And he goes, I can save you. Oh, well, I got bad news. Not as much as $600. I can save you $450. I'm like, you're still saving me $450 with better coverage. He saved so. you $500, bucks, better coverage. And he did all the work. You got this two years ago. Yes. And did you ask him to? to no. Did you thing. tell him you were unhappy with your current provider? Not one bit, so this no. guy's just going through his uh, files? Yes. And I love uh, unsolicited getting calls where it's going to save me money. So I, 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 there's nothing better than that. I, I don't know. I don't know why anybody hasn't called him yet just to check on it. Okay, let's not make it a, a novel, Mark. I'm just saying. Okay, you call them at 586-209-4106. Uh, That's where I get mine. And you know what? Once you save that 450 bucks, you got to do something smart with it. You know what you should do with it? What? Hit it. 
This message of uplift is brought to you by business and personal wealth advisor Luke Nowacki, who reminds you that what does it profit a man to gain the whole world but never enter the kingdom of God? But while you're waiting, Nowacki wants you to remember that overreaction is not a sound financial strategy. So call Luke Nowacki at 248-663-4748 for sound financial advice. We on? Yeah. Vinny, stop fucking texting me. I'm in the middle of a show, dude. God. Okay, listen. We have the Flint Freedom Fighter, Eric Mays, with us. I'm going to ask him. I know he's very busy. He can only be here a few minutes. Big things going on in Flint. Please hold on, Eric. And big time Republican consultant Jason Rowe is out in Park City, Utah, because the Republicans there are sensible and it's not on fire. So if you could, you're looking very Republican, Jason. Thank you with with that with snowboard and Park City, Utah. Hold on for us, gentlemen. Big news going on, but we gotta do some quick news. Uh, Karen Red, what up? No, the ice storm. The ice storm. DTE consumers again, right? Man. Okay, so you're reading it. Karen and and Red and I before the program are looking around the country, checking out the power outage map. It swept from California to New York, this ice out. Let me give you the current outages across the country. Currently in California, as we speak, there's 31,262 customers without power. Customers means two and a half people, right? You subtract the business and there's a mama and a baby and a daddy or whatever. Right? So it's about two and a half a household. California, 31,262. Texas, 3,113 customers without power. New York, 15,715. Wisconsin, 25,000. Indiana, 2,500. Ohio, 2,194 customers without power. Pennsylvania, 793 customers without power. Canada did not forget about you. Ontario currently 2,000 customers without power. And in the great state of Michigan, currently there are 820,000 customers. That's 2 million people. That's one-fifth of our great state are in the dark. They don't have heat. Or lights. And how many times we got to do this? This is fucking criminal, Karen. Yeah, it is, Charlie. And the crazy thing is that, to, you know, when the, when everyone was anticipating the storm, they were telling you we're going to have power outages. Um, your power is not going to be restored until Sunday. It's almost as if they know that either the system uh, is compromised, that they don't care, or that this is part of their business model. Just every now and then pull the plug on its customers. They're not, uh, they're, they're, they're not, is it, it's dark at the Normandy. Dark ain't the question. It's dark, dark. It's no light. I mean, it's, it's terrible. And that's like at least 300 people in that building. Man, this is, this is bullshit. How many times are we doing it? How many times have we done DTE? How many times? Look, there's a, there's an auto executive in studio today. Not, not his point of view, particularly I'm not putting in his mouth. My power goes out. I got no heat. I got to drive someplace where it's fucking warm, like called like Ohio <laughs> or, or Canada, and my electric car won't fucking drive. Because you couldn't charge yeah. it. These people belong in prison. I don't care. Somebody's got to say it. Somebody's got to say it. Mark, they just jacked up our rates for peak hours in the summer by 35%. Because it's so fucking flimsy, they don't want you using it. You don't think they're going to use that and money to improve things? this was after the last year. <laughs> yeah, you're right, Karen. Um, unbelievable. Okay, listen, this, this one, pay attention to. I need reporters' help. You do remember that, that horrible thing that happened a really long time ago? Like it was like, I think, like last week. <laughs> right. <laughs> it was the mass murder on the campus of Michigan State University. Okay, I'm not forgetting. We can improve stuff. We don't need gun laws per se. We don't need mental hospitals for, per se. I mean, we're never gonna do that. We need something though. But you know when they say, uh, some pe I, there are laws on the books that can be enforced, right? We have the laws we need. That We don't do it. So this is, this is, the, this got missed. We're not done here. 
Lansing Police Department, Chief of Police. I want you to listen to what the chief said at a press conference where there was no follow-up asked. And then I want you to hear what Zach went around and talked to a half dozen of the neighbors of the gunmen. We, get, we got a one-minute piece here to, just to prime this. I'd like to clear up just a few things, a few topics of misinformation that we have uh, been asked about, about either the accused McRae or the address, the Lansing address on Howe Street in the city of Lansing. LPD has not responded to any welfare checks for Anthony McRae. There was a welfare check at the address on Howe Street on February 5th, but was not related to the accused. And LPD has not been called in any way to any shots fired at this address. There was a welfare check at the address on Howe Street on February 5th, but was not related to the accused. And LPD has not been called in any way to any shots fired at this address. Pause that. So according to you guys yeah. and to the rest of the neighbors, there have been shots fired at the house. Correct. They were there while shots were fired. Yeah, yeah, we did. Uh, I seen a police car sitting right here, kind of in the trail area, and we heard shots fired from the backyard and nothing. I mean, they didn't pay any attention to it. I don't know if they were there for the shots fired. Get a title. Um, but uh, yeah, I did see a police car sitting there while there were shots fired. One time the police was there when he shot, and the police no, just later. For all the neighbors that don't really talk very much to all have the same story, kind of you know puts it in perspective that the police are not being very honest with what's going on. Okay, so what do we hear there? The chief of police just said to the world, eight days before this homicidal maniac decided to ruin lives he did not know, you were at his house on a welfare check not related to the gunman? So who was it? <laughs> I called right. the police. And so nobody asked. I called the police. I talked to him about it. I sent him the, you know questions this is what i'm is there a report who made the call on what circumstances who was the call for give me the report are there any other calls you heard the neighbors yeah you heard the neighbors they've been here numerous times over the years there's a half dozen of them they're not crazy well right? and, and every call is logged right so it's going to be one of two things let me wait uh, might jump on the gun on book, this bookmark it all right the chief said cleverly we didn't respond to any shots fired calls. Mm -hmm. Well, did you respond to any calls? Was anything written down? Right? Because it should be. Why did you go to a man who's ambulatory, healthy by all uh, stories, outgoing, physical? Why did you go over there? there? There's nothing written down? Neighbors just fucking told you. Yeah. Well, and, and, and when it's uh, who said, who said, right? Who, who's got the reason? And, and we were talking about this last week. Who would have the reason to maybe mislead here? The neighbors? I don't think so. So what are we doing here? Are we looking for a scandal? I, I know it's still raw and it's going to be raw forever for some families and some young people that got to live through the, the damage done to them. But there is something to be fixed. Mm-hmm. Now, when I called you Monday and laid out specifically what we were looking for, it's Thursday, madam, at the, Los, at the Lansing Police Department. Chief, everybody was willing to do press conferences and talk, and now you're quiet. The reason we're doing this is we want it fixed if it needs to be fixed. And you you got to acknowledge it. what's wrong before you can there fix you it. That's uh, the thing. And, and, and until people will be open and honest about, you know, the, the, the loopholes and the cracks in the system or the disconnect between all these agencies, then nothing will ever be fixed. There, there will never be any accountability. And there could be, you know, rational explanation. Could you imagine in Uvalde, did the police go over there on a welfare check of the grandmother a week before? I think, oh boy, I thought there was a report. I couldn't verify it, but I thought there was a report that they had been over there before, but not a week. And look what look at Uvalde. Mm -hmm. They tore that mm -hmm. department up, and we got to yeah. fix it, man. We got We got to move forward and do better. And one of the reasons they they did that, and there was that full report, is it was demanded by the press and also by the families. So you know, start asking questions, people. If so, you want, if you really want this to be fixed. Ask some fucking questions. We need some help from the press. Yeah. 
Okay, we're getting to stiff. Mm-hmm. I mean, we're not we're not dropping this, are we? No, no bullshit news hour. It's no. got to be True. about truth and 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 accountability. If some a mistake was made, an oversight was made, then go ahead and admit to that. Let, like you said, it needs to be fixed. And even look, maybe maybe there's nothing to it. Maybe the old man called himself, said I hurt my foot. No one's here. Could be, mm-hmm. could be. Uh, you know, police never heard the neighbor. I I need to know. I don't just need you telling me like I checked the, like the call book. Did you pull every file up? Because this guy was a guy known to be carrying a gun. He flouted his nose at his probation. He got the slap, slap on the wrist. In my neighborhood, a guy moves next door and he starts doing target practice. You damn well right. Hell yeah. You damn well right because that just leads to warring neighbors. Yeah. But Bigger you know, it was something else that was inter- interesting too um, is that the guy that Zach talked to said, you know, be- even though the stories were consistent, he talked about how the neighbors didn't talk to each other much. That's another concern when we talk about, you know, paying attention and responding to potential crisis or people in crisis. We don't have that neighborhood connectivity, that village, if you will, that people keep talking about anymore. Everybody's either afraid of each other or they're just in their own worlds and there's no awareness. There's no response to this. And there's no connectivity. Nothing. Seem, seems to me they were aware. That, that's what I was going to say, because a welfare check well, don't just happen because the police decide, oh, I'm going to go by and check on this address. Somebody see, outside the house made a call to send them over there for a quote unquote welfare check now if it's the neighbors that's disconnected or a family member somebody knew something was going on all right so let's just help help us get to the bottom of it uh lansing pd it's documented answer it hey charlie uh, you're calling on reporters to help on this yeah you know, the problem that i've watched J- on this so jason far is Rowe, the reporters, yes. yeah the reporters have actually been making excuses for the former Ingham County prosecutor that should be the number one person held accountable for this. Carol Siemens, one of those progressive reform prosecutors, eliminate cash bail, don't enforce laws, etc. cetera. Uh, she's the one that well, let this guy walk on a felony I, I, gun I charge. I appreciate it, Jason, but we, co- we, we covered it at length. There's so many people walking around with pieces that there's not enough room right, to but end. You got that. Dana Nessel then coming out saying we need gun control because enforcing strict gun laws is not going to work. That doesn't even make okay, any okay, sense. Okay, listen, listen, you're going to have your segment. Here's the thing. You're right about Nessel. What? I don't expect any, any criminal justice body to be looking into a criminal justice body. They got to do their fucking job. The prosecutor, I agree, once the guy flouted his nose at his probation, he should have got 30 days... And God is warning. But there's a guy on a porch popping off. Somebody do their fucking work. There are people yeah. gone. All right, we're going to leave it at that because I know I want to uh, thank Eric Mays for holding on. Are, are you there, Councilman? Eric Mays of Flint. Yeah, I'm here. Um, any comment on that before we dig into the, 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 the work you're doing? No, my condolences to the family of the students at Michigan State. I hope that those five that have been moved from critical to fair to stable and the one left in critical, I hope that they make it through. And I hope that the students, you know, can feel safe. I graduated from Michigan State. So, you know, that campus is dear to me. Beautifully said, man. Really, thank you for saying that. We all agree, I think, on that. Um, how you want to inter- uh, uh Eric l- let me just lay this out okay there's so much shit going on up there it's like it's it's just our northern neighbor you guys are on the north side of town here um i could g- go through it all but here's the latest one if i'm correct correct me if i'm wrong i mean basically what you're trying to do is now going across the world people are paying attention to what Eric Mays is trying to do up there the latest one is sex capades, uh, harassment. There was a secret settlement, a quiet one. The public didn't get to see it. $175,000 to a former cop who uh, alleged that one of her supervisors, uh, supervisors, Tyrone Booth, was sticking his crotch in her face, sending her blowjob texts, et cetera, et cetera. And now you're saying there's more to it, that uh, the chief Terrence Green somehow involved in all of this? Well, I wouldn't vote for the proposed settlement 
um, we hear certain things in closed session. Um, when there's lawsuits, I don't really discuss some of the closed session communications, but the public complaint alleged that Tyrone Boot, one of the golden boys, had been texting, asking for all sex, and the deputy chief had been involved in it. And then I had former police officers and chiefs and people in the community tell me that that same um, white female had been living with the chief of police who is now the chief. And, um, you know, she departed from the department. And um, me and two other council people wouldn't vote on that agreed settlement. I believe had it went to trial, other folks' names and the bigger scandal might have come out. I believe they believe that. And so there was other pieces to the lawsuit. I called the chief up to try to get some information, and he went ziggity-boom. And um, that's a mistake because now he's helped call attention to it. I want folks to know it wasn't just the underlings. Um, my position and my information say that some of these um relationships would have went as high as the chief and maybe others. And um, I don't know the character of the female officer. I do know um, what's being said about the chief and others, and I believe it. And I think it's a mess throughout the department. I don't know if folks have been disciplined, but we can't afford this administration and lawsuits in the police department, the fire department. I mean, this administration is just a little outrageous for me. Dude, I mean, cover-ups on, on two children dying in a house, right? You getting hauled out in handcuffs because, you know, you're going to stick up for what you believe in during council. You got this, the, guy, the settlement, we can say his name, it's public record, Tyrone Booth, he's a spokesman for the department. He's making, Flint's broke as a joke, he's making over $100,000 to be the spokesman and never give a word about anything. And I did some looking around and some calling around. I don't know if this guy is the security for Mayor Sheldon Neely, but he's always, he, he looks like the body man to me. Follows him on the campaign stump, right? Like he's security. Is this a good old boy shit you got going on up there? Say that again. What's your question? Stuff? Is this a good old boy thing going on? Is this is that department infected with incompetence and, and good old boyism? Yeah, in my opinion, it is. You know, one of the deputy chief of staff um, back, if you look at the history, assaulted and jumped on me. And that good old boy network wouldn't prosecute, didn't do anything. I'm a sitting council person. The same folks, Neely, the mayor, um, Booth, um, Chief Green. And I'm saying to myself, it's got to come to a head. When I looked at the fire with the two children and the cover-up, in my opinion, during the election, not the fire folks trying to win an election, this stuff is coming out after the election. We're facing sixty million in liability. I just don't think we can afford this administration and the lies. Um, some of it remind me of that Santos guy out of New York. <laughs> I got a degree. You ain't got a degree. You're lying. It's just lie after lie and cover up. Yes, I, cover. for those that don't know, the mayor of Flint for years said he had a college degree. He didn't have a college degree. Yeah, it's here's the other thing, Eric. Uh, last week, a, a water main broke, and you had to boil water in Flint. I thought we sent like three hundred million dollars up there to replace the lines, but it becomes obvious we didn't replace the main shit, which is the water mains. What happened to all the money? Yeah, the settlement that I believe was messed up by Mister Neely and Richard Whitman, the debacle with the criminal prosecutions from Nestle's office to word into Fahad. I mean, this stuff has been a mess. The um, fixing of the pipes never was commercial and churches. It was just a water line um, going to residential houses. When Neely came in the office, that hit was postponed 
for seemed like a year or two um, contractors was let go for political reasons. This administration and some of the powers that be has been a mess, and I don't bite my tongue, Brandon. Wretched Whitman and Minnesota for Hyde and Worthen and the whole crew. I've never seen such a mess in my life. Do you, Can, sir, oh, do, sorry, Karen, real quick, I'll just say, okay. no, do you have power right now, Eric? Beg your pardon? Do you have power, electricity, right now? Is your power on? Yeah, I do here. Oh, who do you know, Mr. Councilman? All of a sudden, you've got power. <laughs> sorry, Karen, go ahead. No, it's okay, Councilman Mays. I just wanted to ask you, at the end of the day, what about the residents of Flint? I mean, you know, we keep... There, there, there are issues that continue to pile up on other issues unresolved. Uh, where does this leave the residents? Well, we had a city council election where we had mysterious literature mailed out on some folks' behalf. And I'm very concerned because three or four of those people who benefited from illegal literature are running behind the mayor in this administration. They threw the council vote of teal and so the residents as long as i keep speaking out you know the residents i guess this tiktok thing has been like an explosion i'm getting calls from across the country mm -hmm. i've been asked um over the last two three weeks to become the president of the flint chapter of the national action network whatever that's going to turn into but i think if you got people like myself and others keep banging on it keep pushing on it um platforms like yourself and others getting it out i think we can help the people but we've got to cut through a lot of this bureaucratic political bullshit and um expose it to get there yeah that we should we should be pulling up his his drop Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That was a good one right there. Yeah, it is. <laughs> now, um, there's listen. a lot of bullshit going on down here. Hey, that's it. <laughs> Amazing how it hasn't changed since he first said that. Uh, hey, man, this, I tell you, Eric, I respect the hell out of you, man. Keep. I know you got lots of stuff to do tonight. Uh, the Democrats are fucked up. But don't worry, we're fair. The Republicans are fucked up, and we're going to bring that to you. Eric, thanks a lot for you know fighting a good fight, man. I know you don't get paid a lot for yeah, that. My man, thank you. Thank All right, you. now, be, before we bring you how fucked up the Republicans are and you don't have anything, America, I just want to remind you, I don't know about water mains, but I know if you need internet service, oh, yeah. right? if you need security cameras, you need access control, Wi-Fi design, an installation, uh, you got restaurants? No, he do power generators. Oh, my God. I bet you he does. I know he does. You know why? Because when shit goes out, when Bernie, when XG Service Group services you, does your restaurant, uh, construction cameras, when your power goes out, when your internet goes out, yeah. We need him at the Normandy. Yeah. They mm -hmm. need, well, you know. I, I spoke with him today. He, it's been a hellacious day for him today. It, yeah. Definitely. Obviously, because of all the power outages. We could have used them, too, because our Facebook went down a couple times. So. Okay, well, we'll, we'll get on that. Red, Sorry. you get your account back? Uh, no. Okay, anyway, well, maybe maybe Bernie and Matt Yaskovitz <laughs> could do that, too. <laughs> Call them at 734-245-4100. 734-245-4100. XG Service Group. And it's here. It's here. There it is. Oh, it's yeah. the Lenten season. Tomorrow's yes. Friday. Every Friday. Oh, wow. Oh, yes. yes. The American Coney Island Fish Witch is here. <laughs> Look at that. That is not cod. That is Pacific Pollock. Yes. It's tender and flaky. Look at this. It's Look beautiful. at the fresh lemon. Look at the crispy lettuce. Look at the cheese. Go ahead. Go ahead, Red. Take a bite. Uh, that's a and, good. And, that is a good fish sandwich. That thing's giant. <laughs> and, and I like to say, this is the only time of year you will get a slice of lemon at American Coney Island. Please, <laughs> quit asking me for lemon in your water. We don't carry it, <laughs> except now. And don't be cheap with the extra drink. You know what the extra drink costs? Stop trying to get something. Just support an institution. How is it? Let's see. I'll be back. I'm done with the show. Mm -hmm. mm -mm -mm -mm. Uh, craft beer, big selection, clean, 
friendly, family friendly, and the best view in Detroit American Coney Island at Michigan and Lafayette. And don't forget the Coney Kit. That's right. Just go to AmericanConeyIsland.com and get them to, uh, to your door, but you won't can get we, the fish. Can week. we have the sandwiches delivered, Charlie? What's that? Can I have some sandwiches delivered? I don't. I know you got a Coney kit. I don't want a kit. I just want I to think deliver. You can. Right? I, uh, they'll definitely like get them fresh and hot, but I think you got to door dash it. You know, you got. I don't know. I'll come and get it. I don't want yeah, strangers you, touching my food. I'll come and get it. Right. Let's, it for you. Yeah, Let's go back it. to normal, okay? Let's go back to normal. <laughs> the studies are out. The masks don't do all of that. They okay. don't. Neither does a vaccine. We talked we, about we that know too. It. I, I got them. I didn't deny. I went around. I'm a sheep. I didn't want anybody hating me. Didn't kill me that bad. I, I'm gonna be honest. That I much. Marijuana was the the key. I didn't catch Corona one time, and I've been smoking all through it. Dude, you're perpetual Corona. You're a Corona bomb. You don't even know. You're going up and down the stairs. You're like, oh man, I really got to get in shape. I was like, you got Corona, bro. <laughs> No, that was weed smoker's lung. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of weed smoker lung, Jason Rowe, the former executive director of the Michigan Republican Party, who's now in Park City, Utah, just, you know, chillaxing. He's got lots of clients someplace else besides Michigan. <laughs> Should we? Okay, the news is... Christina Caramo, the election denialist, the one who says a month after the story's out that there were 150,000 fake ballots came into Cobo Hall. I'm telling you there wasn't. I'm telling you if they did, I would have told you it would have been the easiest Pulitzer Prize. Did not happen. There's not a scintilla of anything. You all heard the Fox News anchors and the text messages between them oh, yeah. these people are crackpots there's nothing to this hey but we got to do it to keep up the ratings look fuck dte fuck the democrats but i'm telling you fuck the republicans and any whack job i need something better i got kids so do we want to play something before we have jason come in just to set it up for the audience who's driving around right now because their house is cold and the only heat they got is driving a Mackin on back. <laughs> well, here here is her speech uh, at a at a place. Well, you know, at the GOP MIGOP convention, right? Um, I guess pleading her case as to why you should vote her over uh, DePerno. I think it really came down. Yeah, to Yeah, DePerno. DePerno. Now, listen, Donald Trump was stumping for DePerno, and he lost. <laughs> Donald Trump can't even win a backwater fucking election. That ought to tell you something. <laughs> Go ahead and roll it. You may not always like me, but you know I'll keep my word. And that's what we need as chair and co-chair of the Michigan Republican Party. We need to fight to secure our elections. It's the reason I did not concede after the 2022 election. Why would I concede to a fraudulent process? Conceding to a fraudulent process is in an agreement with the fraud, which I will not do. You lost by 14 fucking percent, dingy. Come on. Now, Jason, uh, you left the party because it's nuts. What do you make of the what, what's what's happening with this party, bro? When's the next time well, a Republican's going to win anything? I, I think what you saw here with the election of Christina Caramo is that Donald Trump created a monster that he lost control of. Uh, he endorsed Matthew DiPerno uh, at the outset of the race for uh, Michigan GOP chairman. Uh, uh, there was probably no greater purveyor of election conspiracies related to 2020 in Michigan than Matthew DiPerno. Uh, I thought it was a slam dunk that, that he would be the next chairman, particularly partnered with uh, Grant Soldano, another candidate um, for governor uh, who, who has a great, uh, great big uh, following amongst the grassroots over the COVID lockdowns and his opposition to them. And he was but selling COVID he, bills got, that didn't work. Okay, but anyway, go ahead. But, but, you know, going into this, you would have thought, you know, DiPerno had everything going for him. But apparently the fact that he accepted the outcome of his loss for uh, attorney general disqualified him from the delegates consideration. <laughs> I had heard early on that, that was going to be a big issue even two months ago uh, that Christina would be the surprise candidate. I, I still thought it was unlikely given uh, the influence that Trump has. But, you know, I say that Trump created a monster that he lost control of when somebody with the influence over the Michigan Republican uh, electorate, the, the base activists like Trump, can't tip the election for state party chairman to his candidate. And by the way, you talked about a 14 point 
uh, landslide. Uh, this was a 16 point landslide that she won uh, Michigan GOP chairman. Okay, so, so what's the, what's the a, what's okay? Talk to me like we're on the phone, bro. Like you know, yeah, it's much more interesting. Like when you're on the phone with me. So, what is the fucking future of this party? I I I swear to God. Look, I mean, it, the Democrats took everything. I'm an independent, and I'm looking over there, and you know, again, I mean. People on the right are like, dude, you're losing credibility. I will say, well, what? Telling the truth, man? I, w are are the Republicans dead if this is what they're going to be offering up? They even want to change the primary to a caucus. How can they raise money? Well, I think raising money is going to be the number one problem that they have. I think there is a, a, a bit of naivete amongst grassroots uh, that it's the who and not the how when it comes to small dollar donations to the party. Um, it is very expensive to raise money online. It is very expensive to raise money in the mail. Uh, you are lucky to break even when you're prospecting for new donors. And even after you have a donor file, you're lucky to you know net 5% of every mailing. So you need major donors to come in and fund your operations and fund your small dollar programs even to do that. And, and they're not going to uh, do Christine, it. Is that, is that what you're saying? Perno, the, the, the big donors aren't going to sit on their wallets? Is that what you're telling me? They're not touch the party uh, under this regime. It's just not going to happen. And uh, you have a, a, a faction that spent two years kicking the major donors in the teeth and talking about how awful they are and then turning around and saying, how come you guys didn't give us any money? Well, they weren't good candidates and they spent the entire time engaged in a hot war with the donors that fund the party. And so now she has, you know, she's the dog that caught the car. She's now going to be the chairman of the party and she's not going to have anywhere to go to get the resources. And I think within three months, uh, it's going to be very desperate for them because they're not going to have the money that they need even to keep the lights on in the state party headquarters. How does so this... So, Jason... Go ahead, Karen. Sorry. Yeah, no, I'm sorry. No, I, I wanted Usually to ask... I know when so, you're going to say something because you're sitting over there. We, we're still doing that Zoom. <laughs> <laughs> well, on Thursdays, I'm here. On Mondays, I'm there. But... Um, so will the platform for the Republican Party be about, you know, uh, election fraud and that because that's been the conversation since the last presidential election and every Republican has seemingly kind of hung their hat on it. And now that seems to be Christina's whole thing. Is that going to be the platform and conversation of the Republican Party uh, abandoning any and everything else that they could or should be talking about? Well, I, I don't know that I agree that every Republican has hung their hat on it. I think most elected Republicans in the state uh, have not embraced the conspiracy theories. I think they've nodded and rolled their eyes and tolerated it. I think the time for tolerating it has passed. But I don't think there's any mistake that Christina is going to make this the focus of uh, what she does as chairman. And, you know, I think, you know, looking even back to what Charlie said, how do we grow a party when you spend all your time kicking out people that don't subscribe to your conspiracy theories, you don't, you know, you don't grow your party by subtraction. You grow it by addition. And the idea that she's going to attract, you know, conservative independents and right. moderate right Democrats to the Republican Party when you're kicking out Republicans that you don't like. I don't know how we're going to be competitive if that's their message. He's telling, hey, he's I, telling you what you want to hear. I, I got a suggestion for the Republican Party here in Michigan. Yeah. Maybe they should run on a platform that they'll keep the freaking lights on. <laughs> you know how Whitmer said, fix the damn potholes? Yeah. Maybe they could take the slogan, keep the freaking lights on. <laughs> yeah, but wait a minute. Those big donors are the ones that run the fucking power company. Oh, shit. Yeah. They're the motherfuckers like padding everybody's pockets. Look into it. Just Google that DTE political contributions. <laughs> there goes that idea. Yeah. There's a lot of bullshit going on in here. Man. <laughs> bullshit. It's all, it's a fucking game. No. A lot of bullshit, bullshit going, going on, on down, down here. here. Do it again. It's a lot of bullshit going on down here. Hit me again. It's a lot of bullshit going on down here. Ladies and gentlemen, your next director of the National Action Network, Flint. <laughs> it's a lot of bullshit going on down here. That's a man sharp that can use right there. Hit me again. It's a lot of bullshit going on down here. Who that man know he got power? What the fuck? I gotta I, have. Go ahead. What? I do want to send my condolences out to all the personal marijuana growers at home who has lost their power and taken a major oh. loss in your crops right now. Detroit Red is here for you. I feel you. I'm just, I tell you what, Red's got Red's got a car. He can get over there and remove them for you. Yeah, yes, and, and, and no and, additional and he can, charge. He can just save them. You can come get them. 
You know what I mean? So do you have like a, like a sale or something, you know, when they when your crops are compromised? Is that how that goes, Red? Well, if you wait long enough, you'll get it all for free. Red will keep them warm <laughs> in his lungs. <laughs> <laughs> we don't let nothing go to waste. So, Jason, um, Biden sucks. Everybody knows it, okay? How does this play out for the 2024 presidential election? This certainly got to help Biden. In terms of Michigan, you know, it's not, you know, I think a lot of people put too much stock in what the state party does from an organizational standpoint. It helps, but it's not the end of the world. The Republican National Committee will kind of hijack operations for the presidential candidate. We got a U.S. Senate race. The National Republican Senatorial Committee will oversee that for congressional races, the National Republican Congressional Committee. And then, you know, the state Senate doesn't uh, have elections for four years. So it's just the House. And there's a national group called the Republican State Leadership Committee that will work with the Lansing-based House Republican campaign If I can pause you there. So they will raise the money and do all those things and coordinate with the candidates they care about. But you won't have that centralizing organization in the Michigan Republican Party that brings everybody to the table together so that you maximize your resources and coordinate. And that you, you know where the bodies are buried, so to speak, in Michigan. The auto executive's doing this. And he's right in a way. Blah, 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 blah. He's listing stuff. But auto executive, the auto exe- this is the game within the game. Yeah, he's, he's understood. Well, it's, it's just this, this guy. This, let, me, let me just tell you, Jason Rose. He's probably the sharpest modern political mind I've met in a decade. Like the guy's really good. And if y'all want to throw him to the side, well, great. I'm going to get... Another fucking four years of overpriced eggs, maybe oh. some war with China. I don't know, man, but I'm telling you, the Republicans stink, and I'm telling you, the Democrats stink, and I don't know what to do. Mark, what do we do? Uh, you're asking the wrong guy. You call legacy insurance. <laughs> oh, yeah. You better look out. You got you to gotta save a couple fucking nickels, motherfucker, man. Shit. I do got an important question for you, Jason. <clears throat> I've noticed that snowboard in the back there the whole time, and you haven't touched it once. Do you really ride the snowboard? Inquire I'm an OG know. snowboarder, Red. I'm OG. I started snowboarding in 1987 on Mount Brighton. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Is that in the in, in the right hand uh, side of the picture? You're thirty out six. Are you going? <laughs> right. Are you going elk hunting later? <laughs> On the snowboard. <laughs> what is he fucking from Finland? <laughs> Stone, which is the triathlete, is skiing, shooting, and bong rips. Oh, I might have to come out with you on the trip. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you know what Red will do. You know he won't do any skiing. He won't wax him. He won't load your gun, man. But he pack your bong for you. Yeah, there you go, buddy. Keep it going. <laughs> All right. So um, before we let you, I just want to remind you about this caramo here. You're a nut. I'm sorry. Look at here. You're a nut. You're a nut. I didn't forget what you did trying to win that Secretary of State shit. You made shit up and you dumped it to fucking right wing media who sometimes likes me when I go after the governor for lying about the nursing home dead, but then you don't like me because I won't lie about your lie. And here's, remember this one? Pause, pause. She said, you said you're going to F and tear me up. Do I hear any video of me saying I'm going to F and tear you up? No. Fake news, fake, fake oh, news. Oh shit, they converted you. Fucking fake <laughs> fucking news, call out bullshit. I, I am gonna just watch you fucking destroy this party that you stole. You never belong to a country club. All of you all are rhinos. You know, Republican in name only. Because the rhino is the one they've never been in. The Republicans, well, they've got the blazer, my friend. It's Judge Smales. <laughs> hey, why don't you come over and uh, mow my lawn, Danny? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Billy, 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 Billy. You know, when I think Republican, I think Kevin Rinky. He belonged to three clubs, maybe got a yacht. His daddy gave him this car lot. That's a Republican. And I don't like him because they took us into a rock. And the fucking world economic order collapsed. That's what they do. And I miss them. (laughs) (laughs) 
I'm just sorry. Can I get some incompetent fucker in a blazer for once? <laughs> what happened to these guys? I, I used I, to carry their golf clubs. I may be wrong, but for some reason when I look at her, I just can see her in her office with an Ouija board. So what should I do with this next major decision? Should I drive the kids into the lake? <laughs> oh, I didn't say that. That's, that's probably no. There's, there's no, basis for that. No, no. Her, her, her ex-husband said that. Oh, wow. Yeah, that is fact. That's fact. It's in the court filing, yeah. Wow. And well. basketball makes you a lesbian and yoga <laughs> satanic. <laughs> but you know what? You this, You're sorry. right. The election was stolen. You did you won by 14%. <laughs> but you know, Charlie, early on when I met Christina, this was a long time ago before she got before I was like, dress. you know, she no. she came No, I mean, you know, she came across as as polished, as informed. Um, you know, I said, you know, she appeared to have promise and then some of her comments and some of her antics just took me off base. Uh, so I don't know what happened. Maybe it was the vaccine. I don't know. She's she's super bright. First yeah. time I ever she, spoke with her, I'm like, with I, I'm really impressed with this person. This I, I'm serious. And then yeah. when I saw her again, I'm like, who's she? What? You know what I mean? I'm like, I I, I I couldn't put together that's who I had met. Yeah, she took a turn that just seemed a little abnormal or a little unexpected from what I anticipated from knowing her early on. Call out. She's trifling. Well, and, she's and, trifling. You know, oh, you're standing in, in spite of the video. <laughs> I thought he was a very slope. sweet woman, too. What's she's that? a very He's, sweet woman, too. But I think a lot mm -hmm. of people around her just filled her head with a lot of this stuff. And I think that's one of the reasons for the departure from the person that you met once before and who she is mm -hmm. today. Oh, well, so when, you're when saying you, two minutes in the room with Trump did it? No, I, I think. Yeah, there's there's some grassroots people that were, I think, pumping shit into her head. And when you get told certain things or you get pushed back from the other side, you tend to dig in and expand that and then really make that your hardcore belief. Yeah. I, I but that's not that. a leader, though. That's not a oh, leader. Well, that, that is not is a leader. So, well, but I mean, if that's, you know, that's the so case. true. That's so if true. those are the things that influence anybody, this isn't just for her, then you're not a leader. Then you are a follower and you're a person that allows your head to be blown up with stuff that probably is not substantive. And this is where it places you. So, you know, it's unfortunate yeah. and disappointing. But then that means that she doesn't have the leadership capabilities that we thought she did. A leader got to got to tell people hard things. Yeah. Yes. You got it. Yes. I just and think for themselves. When, when, when a politician lost gracefully and said either I'm going to run again next time or just went on head back to whatever they were doing. I mean, why we can't get, just get back to that? You lost this Because time. it was stolen. <laughs> <laughs> Well, because we can't get back to anything until we get back to the good old values of it's not stolen anymore. <laughs> Stop the steal. Listen, and I, I just feel compelled all of a sudden to give a list of like, listen, man, I, I know how you feel, like especially, you know, the grassroots of the Republican Party. Yeah, I, I, I feel the same thing. I, I know we got sold out. I know that that absentee ballot qualified voter list was bullshit. I'm, I'm trying to do the work for you, but you cannot... I will not ridicule you. I'll ridicule her, but not you. But you can't expect me to just buy the bullshit. Life's too short. The you people are that's the problem. There's legitimate, there's legitimate issues out there, but they get clouded by the crazy things. And so there's a lot of mainstream people, establishment people that are in agreement on some changes that need to meet, some gaps in the system. But when you start floating out all this crazy shit on top of it, it's hard to get to what substantively could be changed. And maybe even in some cases bipartisan because of all this crazy noise. Well, can you stop giving me, I know you're in Utah fucking kowtowing to the fucking altar of Mitt Romney, but can I get somebody that reflects me and what I'm going through? Power's out, Mitt. Hey, I got an idea. Let's get a hedge fund and buy some of that. <laughs> <laughs> now, listen, I want to, it's for the audio executive sitting here. And I going to leave you with this. So I'm going to say goodbye to everybody. Everybody stay, but I'm going to say goodbye. But I'm just let it float on the last word here, okay? It is the beginning of the Lenten season. And uh, I visited my sister's grave. Many of us Christians consider the Saturday before Lent is the original All Souls Day. That's the time to honor the dead. My niece is buried with my sister, or my sister was added with my niece. I can't remember our families like that. They were laid to rest in the family plot of my niece's grandparents out in Plymouth near the courthouse 
just outside the right field fence of the old municipal ball diamond. I couldn't bring myself to sweep the snow from their headstones because I'm not sure their names have been added. That thought makes me weep. My, the grandmother of my niece has her name chiseled in the granite, and I'm not sure if the woman has passed yet. How strange I thought standing there, how we all fall away. There were some withered wreaths near the headstone, blanketed in ice. I said my piece for my kin, and I left a tobacco offering. And then I drove to see my mother afterward. She lives on Joy Road about 10 miles from the cemetery. My mom doesn't visit their plot much either. Too many memories, too much pain. My mom doesn't like headstones and doesn't want one. She doesn't say it exactly, but her day's coming upon her. I hope her days will be long and happy, but a time comes when we must all repay our loan from the maker and be at peace with it. Mom lately has been giving things away, furniture and old copper pots and such. She says strange little things now like, I want to get a puppy, but it would be unfair to leave it behind. In an upstairs closet, she keeps the remains of her third and favorite husband and her second and favorite son. When I go, she says, put us on a Viking raft together, set us out to sea, and shoot fire arrows at us. This manner of dispatching mortal remains does not comport with the law of the faith, nor maybe do some episodes of my mother's life, but surely my mother's conducted herself in the spirit of it. To that, I can bear witness. There was always room in a raucous and crowded house for the wayward teen or the troubled child or a relation in need of an airing. There was always warm coffee, there still is, and there's always buttered bread and a compassionate ear in my mother's home. And now in this season of sacrifice, my mother teaches me a last great lesson, how to conduct oneself in the fading rays of life, behaving with dignity and grace and courage while treating each new day as though it was no different than the one just lived. There's nothing to fear. A life passes, but a mother and her children's bond is forever. And so we did not dwell on the maudlin. We watched TV and smoked cigarettes and talked to talk of mothers and sons without looking at one another. The cable news droned on. Train wrecks and egg prices and mass shootings on the college campus. She considered the future. Do you think it'll get better, she asked. Sure, just change the channel, ma. No, son, I'm worried about the grandkids. Yeah, me too. They say every woman dies twice. Once when she's buried or set to sea, and once when her name is spoken for the last time. That is how some people become immortal. I'm not wholly certain of what awaits any of us on the other side of life's door. I'll pray and reflect upon it during this Lenten season. But I do know this for certain. Headstone or none, my mother's name will be spoken for generations within her circle of blood and beyond it. Good deeds make good persons and good persons are remembered. Or as my mom says, what does it hurt to be kind? I love you, mom.